Welcome back to the 52 Weeks to Wealth. My name is Walter Amorello, and we have been journeying through these 52 weeks for the last 24 weeks. This is Wealth Principle 24, the power of stick to it iveness. Now, you can Google that word, and it is actually a word. It's only got two hyphens in the name, and what it means is to stick to something relentlessly, the ability to stick to something for life, a powerfully long commitment. Another definition, if you look it up in the Merriam, is doggedness, unrelenting doggedness towards a goal, a desire to accomplish something so powerfully that nothing can get in the way and you will stick to it until accomplished. Hands to the camera if you recognize that that sort of goal, that sort of doggedness, stick to itiveness would be unstoppable if you had that in your life. Hands to the camera. Let's, let's see some hands. Yep. Excellent. So we do the 52 weeks to wealth as a way to double our income. That's right. Double your income, double your net worth and create financial freedom for yourself. If you're here and you want to make financial freedom, put your hands to the camera. If you want more money, more money in your life. Excellent. Would you like to do it with less work? Put your hands up if you want to do it with less work, more money, less work. Excellent. So anybody who's new to the program, anybody who's new to this series of wealth building, they may think that we're a bunch of lazy people. But the truth is, we're just aware that hard work will not get you rich. There's too many gurus in this space say, you got to work hard, you got to work hard, you got to work hard. You've got to take action. You've got to move fast. Otherwise, somebody else will take it from you. And what I've discovered is that you must move correctly, persistently. And you must stick to it even if you fail. Now, Wealth Principle 24 used to be called, you will fail, do not give up. But I felt like that kind of fell flat. It didn't feel like it was powerful enough. And I noticed that it wasn't drawing people in. What, for whatever reason, Wealth Principle 24 was one of the principles that people seem to skip. When in reality, Wealth Principle 24 has been my one resource my entire life. I have known about this word stick to since I was about 18 years old. When I was 18, I was going through the dictionary. I saw this super long word that I've never heard of. And I didn't believe it was actually even a word. I was going through, and fun fact, I've read over 400 books. The dictionary is one of them. I ran through the dictionary just so I could understand some of the words, just to interest myself. See, the, see some things that I'd never seen before. And stick to it. This is one of those words that is kind of stuck in my mind because I said, this is what I've done my entire life. This is what I've done that has made me a little unique, a little different from others, a little faster, uh, giving me an unfair advantage. In real estate investing, we want an unfair advantage. In business, we want an unfair advantage. The person who makes the most money is the person who has something that they have an abundance of that they can just give away. Hands to care if you've seen that before. Somebody has so much of something, they can give it away at a fast pace, at a volume, and with great quality service. You look at uh, McDonald's is a great example of someone who can pump out burgers and fries, but then you go to Five Guys Burgers and Fries, and it's like, man, you got to wait for 10 minutes before they can get that thing out. Still a burger, still French fries. Hands to care if you ever, ever had this experience with fast food and a traditional restaurant. Man, I've been to burger joints, take 30 minutes to get your food out. And the difference comes down to the design what they're meant to do, like why why, and how they do it. At McDonald's, they can produce so much more because of a system. And that's also their commitment to the customer. That was what they designed, they were designed to do. We're going to do an exercise today like we do every week so that you can become more committed, so that you can reach your goal. Has anybody ever had a, an issue with reaching a goal they set out to do? And they felt like, you know, that, that goal should have been done. Anybody? Am I the only one who's ever wished they were a little more committed? had a little more stick to itiveness in their life. So one of the goals that was important to me was this 100 millionaires thing, right? 100 millionaires, inspired to build 100 millionaires. I've been talking about it for two and a half years now. We're in season three of the 52 Weeks of Wealth. This time, the stick to itiveness means a lot more to me. I've been writing the book itself, you know, the idea behind stick to itiveness, how to use it. And so I've got a few more tools than I've ever had in the past on this particular wealth principle. So I'm gonna share with you eight steps to be more committed, eight steps that will help you get to the next level in your life so that you can reach any goal that you want. But in order to reach any goal, you must first have a goal. Remember, Wealth Principle 1 was think a million. Wealth Principle 2 was choose a business that can make a million dollars. Hands the camera if you were here for Wealth Principle 1 and 2. If you got your businesses, you know what you're talking about today. You know where we're going. Excellent. If you don't remember, I'll give you five seconds to choose a business. Remember, we don't work after after a business unless it can make a million dollars. A business can only ever become a sixty thousand dollar business. It's not worth your time. A business that would be an example like that is buying used clothes from some sort of thrift store, customizing those clothes yourself, and then 
putting them on the internet. A business like that can't get past 60, 80, $100,000 because it's not super scalable. It has a flaw within its design. But a business like investing in real estate has made more millionaires than any other business on the planet. Net worth millionaires anyway. Now, income millionaires, that is actually done in the fintech space, the financial space that Ryan McDermott is a part of, the financial planners. Those guys make more cash flow, more money per month because of something called residual income. Hans, if you've heard of residual income, and you understand it's one of the keys to recession-proofness. So we're going to talk a lot about becoming recession-proof over the next 90 days as we get closer and closer to the 100 Millionaires Summit because there is, in fact, a recession upon us. Now, you know I'm a positive person. I love talking about positivity and, hey, you know, no matter what happens, we're going to make money. Well, it's true. Hands to the camera if you're a real estate investor. Well, where are my real estate investors at? Anybody? Yeah, all of you? <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. Real estate investors have been seeking a recession for 14 years. Ever since 2008, we said, man, when this thing comes around, we're going to be so rich. I will be so prepared for it. In 2012, when I bought my first multifamily, I was thinking, this is the one. I'm going to buy this. And like a year or two later, market's going to crash. I'm going to crush it again. Because we used to hear the eight-year cycle, the seven-year cycle. Has anybody heard those uh, numbers before? Seven-year cycle, real estate. Excellent. And we believed it, right? In 2008 was the beginning. So then we said, okay, 2010, that's two years. 2015, that's got to be a, a seven-year cycle, which boom, it's got to crash again. In 2015, I bought another multifamily. I, see, I bought a single a multifamily every single year from 2012 on. I've never had a year without buying a multifamily except for this past 12 months. This past 12 months, just the deals haven't shown up for me. But during that period, I was terrified. I was thinking market's going to crash. Market's over. It's, it's game over. Things are done. But I kept buying. 2015, 2016, 2000, 2016, I bought almost 30 units. 2017, we bought another 20 something units. In 2018, we started selling off property. We started selling things off because we thought we were going to, we really thought we were going to crash. We were really, like prices had skyrocketed so much and it seemed to be a little slowdown in the market. And we started selling a couple properties. We got down to 12 units. We were up to 42. We got all the way down to 12 units. And then the market didn't crash. The market kept going and deals started showing up. Deals were showing up everywhere. So we kept buying again. We started buying in. We started buying in and we got all the way up to 55 or 56 units. Actually, no, we were higher than that because we picked up a rooming house that was 40, 48 units. So we were almost a hundred units. We were, we were way up there at this hundred unit point. And now we're at 2022 and we feel it. Man, we feel it in a way that we have never felt it before. We see the, the Fed sticking to it. See, in 2018, the Fed raised the rate 25 points and 25 points and then froze and then went reverse and pulled them back because of COVID. COVID's gone, right? COVID is completely out. They've dropped a ton of money into the system. And now as real estate investors, you're being told by me and a very few other small group of real estate investor gurus, because most of them are saying, keep buying, this works, but the numbers don't work, right? In many cases, they don't work. And it's okay to hold a cash position. Cash is not always trash. Although I will say right now, as a real estate investor, Ron and I are net sellers. We are selling again. We're also holding a lot of our real estate. And I'm talking about the most recession-proof product there is. And then the second most recession-proof product, because if you're not in the first one and it's hard to get into right now, you're going to want room for the second one. Hence, care if this is worth knowing, worth sharing with somebody you know. Excellent. Now, being stick to embodying the power of stick to it takes eight steps. And I'm going to go through a PowerPoint that I put together for you because I want to make sure everybody gets this. And I understand many of you are visual. So before we jump into the book of the week, please make sure who's who can hold me accountable. Hence, care if you'll be willing to hold me accountable to make sure that I come back to recession proof. And those investments. Excellent. Mark Dozwa, Amy McMurray. Okay. Wolf Principle 24 is the power of stick to itiveness. This is doggedness. This is moving through anything that challenges you in life. You got to set a goal. So, eight steps to commit to your goals. The first step is set a goal. <laughs> so, right now, you got about five seconds to set a goal. Any goal does not matter. I set a goal to become a billionaire in the next eight years. So, I set a goal to be a billionaire four years ago. And I'm just moving in progressive nature to that. I've doubled my net worth, doubled my income every single year. And that has allowed me to know that I'm on track to becoming a billionaire. Hands to the camera. If you could do that kind of math yourself, you understand that it's just math to get to a billionaire. Just keep doubling every year or go to a billion and double your way back. How many times do you have to come and split a billion in half? So we set the goal, whatever it may be. And for most of you, it won't be a billion. 
and it shouldn't be right for for most of you a million or or two million at six percent interest is one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Hands the camera if you could live on that. If there's anybody on this call who could live with one hundred twenty a year, all right. Anybody who could live on a quarter million a year. Anybody who you know if you didn't have to work for it. I see a few shaking your heads. Uh, a million a year? Would a million a year be satisfying? <laughs> Some of you are meant to be billionaires. The rest of you, it's okay. Give yourselves a round of applause if you're okay with where you want to be, right? You set your goals, all right? It's not about money either. It's not all about money. Money is just a resource. It's just a tool. It's just a way to get the things that you actually want, to support the people that you want. Two, commit to the process. You must commit to the process. And what a commitment is, is an emotional experience. It is not a logical experience. The math is logical. The decision that this goal is worthwhile, the ideas around how to get there, that well, that's one of the next steps, is all logical. In order to commit to it, it is an emotional experience. This is why so many smart people, intelligent people who have degrees, never get the things that they want. It's because they're not willing to commit. They don't understand what, what their emotional, how to tap into their heart, how to tap into their spirit. And so they emotionally shut down. They have no sauce, no energy, no juice. And it's if you can experience that commitment is, is emotions. You can see that. You can feel it. So uh, how do I explain how to commit to the process? It would be one of those times where you have in your life said, no matter what, I am getting this. No matter what, I will never be treated this way again. No matter what, someone, this person will see me for who I am. And I will do the thing that I've committed to do, no matter what. You might want to write that down. N M W, no matter what. And another sentence that makes me feel so powerful is whatever it takes whatever it takes or W I T it is an emotional experience. And when you write those down, I really want you to close your eyes uh, just for a minute and, and feel that level of commitment. You wrote down a number a little while ago, step one, write a goal, set a goal. You wrote down a number and maybe you wrote down a way of life, a quality of life that you're expecting for yourself. Feel it as if it was already yours and someone took it away from you. And you're saying that is mine. I'm coming back to it. No matter what, whatever it takes. Absolutely. Open your eyes, write down that feeling one more time, write it down, whatever it takes, no matter what, I will produce this result. Now, the next step to committing to the process is you've got to have a plan, right? You have to have a plan in order to accomplish anything. Now, your plan doesn't have to be perfect. And this is one of the challenges that I've seen a lot of people as we've coached, you know, hundreds of millionaires over the years, we've gone through people who started with absolutely nothing come to me and say, okay, like, how do I become a millionaire? First mistake they make, how? Right. Well, if you commit and you stick to it and then you ask me what to do next, what to do next, what to do next, because what to do next is a little more important than how you do it and who can do it for you is even more important. That's super high leverage. Whatever. I'm a mentor. So I've answered the question how to do it. I give them the how. I give them the plan. I give them a strategy. Million dollar strategy. Put on a piece of paper. I'll go with the simplest, biggest one I've ever done. Hands can if you like to see my biggest, easiest millionaire strategy. Simplest one. Buy a five million dollar property, four million dollars. And if you want to get really rich. Buy a five million dollar property for three million dollars. Right? You want to make two million in a day? Just go and purchase a property that is worth far more than you've been thinking about. Most people think about a quarter million dollar property. That's their, their baseline. Or if you're in a higher market, you think about a half million dollar property, maybe a, a million dollar property if you're in New, New York City or San Francisco. But most people aren't thinking on big enough properties to hit these goals quickly overnight. Hands care if that's been true for you too. You've you've experienced that. You know somebody who's experienced that. Anybody know somebody who's been thinking small before? It doesn't have to be you, right? All right. So plan, it has to make sense, but it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're spending too much time planning, because we've had a lot of people come to the mentorship. By the way, hence, Cam, if you've been in the mentorship, if you're somebody who's been through the Alchemist Mentorship Program, you spent the money, you invested the time, and you got into this tribe. That's why your face, your beautiful face is on this camera right now, available so everybody can see the people that could be invested with, the people that I know, like, and trust, the people that do things morally, ethically, and legally. If you're seeing their cameras on the face on the screen right now, if you're on Facebook or YouTube and you're seeing their faces, these are people who have been through my mentorship program. Ask about them, right? Like, sure, if you want to do a deal with them, ask me. I will vouch for any one of these people because I know that they do things morally, ethically, legally. They've been trained by me, by other millionaires. The millionaire coaches, the celebrity coaches have all written books on this call. By the way, let's give our celebrity coaches, there's eight millionaire coaches who have written books on their special subjects. Mike's book's coming out in partnerships, coming soon. And they're donating and dedicating their time to building millionaires. Why do we do that? Yeah, it's because we set out a plan of how to make the world a better place. And we said it starts with the first 100. Now, the plan hasn't been perfect. We've had to adjust it. 
Hands to camera if it's okay if you adjust your plan as you go. You're willing to do that. Excellent. So step three is write down a plan. Just get something in writing so you can start. It may change. It may, it may have to change. That's okay. Step four, let go of the need to feel like it already, right? Let go of the need to feel like it's not working, to feel like, oh, it might not happen for me. Like, let go of that need to feel like it. Does that make sense? Has anybody ever gone through an experience and felt like, oh, you know, these things aren't working. Like, why, why isn't it like working for me? Like, I just don't feel like it, like things are, are in place. Anybody ever like done something and felt like they didn't do it right or started doing something that felt like they weren't the right person to do it? Or has anybody ever in the morning, you woke up and you didn't feel like doing the thing you were supposed to do? Like you didn't want to go to the gym. Has anybody felt that before? So when I say feel like it, again, the only feeling that matters is your commitment. All the other feelings are lies. The mind, the body, like all of these things are going to throw, I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like going and making that call. I don't feel like jumping on that conversation with that next person. Person. About a few months ago, I jumped on 140 phone calls. I'll, I'm a self-proclaimed introvert. I'll tell you, like when I started this business, I was an introvert and it was only at my extrovert and I was able to serve more people. I had to change how I felt, right? Because I feel like it, right? I feel like jumping on calls with people. But when I saw our community, you know, get struggling, there was just a lot of people who weren't doing things that I think were beneficial to them. I jumped on 140 calls with every single person in this community, one-on-one. -on -one. And it took me two weeks and the calendar was tight. You know, Darina remembers, I was stressed every day because I was, I was talking to so many people and at night I would just, I just had to charge, but I did it. And at the end of it, I was stronger, I was tougher, but the community was stronger. The community was tougher. Every single person I had a conversation with was on fire again because they know the value of my time. And also the things that I say in those calls are truth because I've spent so much time with, with the best coaches in the business, right? Dr. Terry Wade was a psychologist and a hip and an NLP practitioner. Doug McGurk has traveled the country with Tony Robbins for three years. One of his coaches that Tony trusted to teach other people. Mike Shine has been partnering with people for years. Mitch Dorsky, right? Studying stocks, crypto. He's been trading for hedge funds for years. Ryan McDermott has been teaching people how to you know, adjust their finances and their taxes. And of course, I'm a multimillionaire a couple times over from real estate, from business. So when I'm in those calls with someone, I'm doing the millionaire path consultations with a person, it's coming from a place of knowledge. Hence, can't you recognize that didn't happen overnight, right? But I stuck to the plan that me and the other coaches committed to, to get us to where we are. I don't always feel like it. You're not always going to feel like, it. please stick to it. Again, that's what stick to itiveness is all about. The goal is recession proof, right? Hands the camera, right? Before I go any further with this, hands the camera, if you want to be recession proof, you know, there's a recession here. We're not negative about it. Like, I don't give a shit that there's a recession. I'm, I'm excited. This means buying opportunity all over the place, right? We can see it right now in the stock market. We see it in the crypto market, dude. You know, if you buy anything right now, Bitcoin has been the 60,000 before. So it's going back, you know, unless Bitcoin just becomes worth nothing, but it, there's too many things that say it's going. What about Tesla? We've seen Tesla at 1500, right? It's at 700 right now. I know it's going back. It's impossible not to. Same with Apple. Like these stocks, Stocks, these businesses, these are huge opportunities. Hence, came for seeing this. You're grasping that all of these opportunities, if they've been there before, they've got to go back there again. Unless the complete, unless you know, the planet blows up and we don't ever use electric cars again. Anybody think we're going back to ice? You know, the in internal combustion engine is just not going to work, right? We have to go forward with electrical cars. So those companies continue to. And by the way, this is not a Tesla pump. Like I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Although Mike does own some Tesla, so I'm talking about opportunity is here. Opportunity is today. Now in the real estate space and the business space, I see way more opportunity, especially in business, especially in cash flow in businesses. This is how we become recession proof. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. Hence again, if you do want to know how to become recession proof, that's really important to you. All right. All right. Let's, let's continue forward with this then. Step five, just get on with it wherever you are today. Many of the times I sit down with some of our students as we're going through these millionaire path consultations and I'll be asked, well, I want to quit my job. Has anybody ever joined the mentorship because they want to quit their job? Anybody on the camera ever joined because they want to quit their job? Didn't like it? Excellent. Just about everybody has said that in one of those calls and they'll say, okay, I want to quit my job. I want to start, you know, being a real estate investor today. That's not what I mean by getting on with it. I'm not saying quit. What I'm saying is just start wherever you are. Just start today just make the first call and and sometimes it is a book you know something like when we jump into the mentorship we do have books that we read and we do go through some process of training but it's designed to be putting in offers within 30 days the mentorship can put in offers within 30 days if you're somebody who's been procrastinating and hasn't put in an offer and you've been through the mentorship this stage memorize it right just get on with it 
Just do it. The worst thing that happens when you submit an offer that you can't handle is you don't get the house. Hand scan if you're catching this. Worst thing that happens, right? You line up your contracts so that your deposit is always protected. Don't go hard deposits, like don't go hard cash and you will be safe. So make sure that you're putting in your offers, doing the one thing that it takes to become successful. Ask, you must ask, you just, just jump in the game. So hands to the camera before we move forward. Do I have a commitment that you will ask? You will just, you'll just get on with it. We're just gonna get on with it. Excellent, powerful community. Powerful group. Every one of you is an alchemist because you take action. Tell people or not. Step six. Should I tell people or should I keep it to myself? Who here has heard a guru say, don't tell people what you're doing? Hands care if you've heard a guru say this. Somebody on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, like, don't tell anybody. You've heard these fucking TED Talks. Hey, don't tell people about what your plans are. I'm not the only one who's heard this shit, right? Is the biggest lie out there. It is the biggest lie in the industry of success. Every single guru you've ever heard say, don't tell people about what you're doing is lying to you. That is their own emotional insecurity. And they got lucky to get to the success level that they got. They used other things like stick to to get to where they were going for leverage. Who here likes leverage? Unfair advantages? Anybody like an unfair advantage? Excellent. Tell other people what you're doing. Just be thick skinned enough that if you tell a hater what you're doing and they tell you, oh, well, that will never work. Well, you see, in the past, you have experiences that you just weren't good enough. Remember the times you weren't good enough to get something done? So you don't have what it takes to be successful in this right now. Hands to camera, if you got those haters, you know who they are. That's the or not part. That's the don't tell those people, right? Unless you're like me who gets fueled by haters. If you're somebody like me, like my mom was my biggest hater growing up right? Growing up, like my mom, anything I said I was going to do, she was like, oh, you can't do that, honey, because you've never done it before. And by the way, the word because is a very powerful word. Anything you put after because is empowered by the word itself. So if I said, uh, you've heard the study, that can I make a copy because I need to make a copy? 40% more conversion rate because the word because was put in there. It's a hypnotic word. It's a very powerful tool. So in sales, by the way, you can use that. But my mom used to say, you've never done that before because you're lazy or you, you, you could never do that because uh, you've never done it before. And that was at one point my belief system. But somewhere around that teenage year, I went through a little transition. Who here has ever gone through a transition where suddenly the things that they were told to do, they were like, no, no, I'm going against that. So I became very rebellious. So when somebody says, I can't do something, something inside of me says, challenge accepted, game on, let's go. Let's see what happens now. Well, now I have to do it because I was told it's impossible. And here's something that successful people know, barriers to entry, means other people are dropping off. The harder something is, the more interesting it is to me. If the reward on the other side justifies the work, I will go after the hard thing before I go after the easy thing. This has in sometimes, some cases, you know, made things difficult because it doesn't always have to be difficult there. Be aware of when it is easier just to grab the thing in front of you. Sometimes it is that good. And it's you've been had experiences where it really was that good. It was just not too good to be true. It truly was good. Yes. So there are those moments. But sometimes when, when there's a barrier to entry, and somebody's telling you you can't be done, that's a sign that you should do it. That's a sign that it is possible to be done. Now, if it's your coach and mentor, and they have a lot of experience in this, and they have what you're looking for, it may make sense to adjust your opinion or your plan on how you get there. Is that okay? And scary if that's okay, right? But if a, a coach or mentor says it's, something is impossible for you, I would get a new coach. <laughs> My, <laughs> just me. <laughs> Excellent. We're getting something here. Valuable? All right, we're going to keep going. So we got two more left, and then we're going to talk about recession proof. Seven, get started, right? Wherever you're at, just get started. It doesn't, you know, we go back to just get on with it. That is every single day an energy thing where it's just remind yourself to go back to it, remind yourself to go back to it, just go back to it, just go back to it. Seven with get started is more about doing today wherever you're at. Just start with where you're at today. Go. The next thing is get started again. The next thing, get started again. You're always going to be starting. As your plan adjusts, remember we talked about the plan with step two, as your plan adjusts, you're going to be starting over and over and over with every day with a new plan. In fact, me and Darina, I won't say argue, but we have these discords every so often where she'll tell me, oh, you're changing the plan again. And the answer, the truth is I'm not changing the plan. I'm adding to the existing plan. And now we're getting started all over again. And it's can you've ever felt like that in your life. It's like I'm starting fresh, starting over. Just do it, right? Don't be afraid. Well, oh, it feels like I'm starting over. Maybe I shouldn't do that because, you know, I don't want to start over. But some things are worthy 
to be started over. If you're going the wrong direction, you found out this doesn't add to the value that you're looking for. You must turn around. You must change course. You must change direction. And the faster you're moving, right? When you get big momentum behind you and you're like for Alchemist Nation, we've got almost 300 people behind us. When I go choose a direction, that's a mob behind me. That's an army behind me. But if I, I, if I get there first and I recognize I've moved everybody in the wrong direction, I got to pivot quick. Does that make sense? Like it's a whole nation of people who are moving. If I don't move fast enough, they could go off the ledge. So the leader, if write this down, if you're a leader in your company and your family and your business, you must get there first to identify if it's safe and if it makes sense. You must move fast. You must be, be moving faster than anybody in your organization so that you can see ahead and you must rely on other people who are ahead of you. This is why I use mentors, coaches, people who have experience because I'm, I'm leveraging the fact that they're ahead of me. They can warn me of things that are coming up so I can prepare you know, everybody behind me like, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is why I've been studying and speaking to top economists on what's going on with the economy right now. Where is this recession going? What's making a lot of sense? What should we do about it? And I've come up with a, a very simple uh, strategy that works for everybody. Eight, reward yourself. Reward yourself daily, reward yourself hourly, reward yourself weekly. Make sure that you have things set in place so that you feel good about the things you're doing. When I was doing those calls, when I was doing the 70 calls a week, it live Zoom, like coaching one-on-one -on -one calls, it's not just pick up the phone and like have a conversation with somebody. This was live, you know, 15 to 30 minute Zoom sessions, doing the millionaire path consultations with people. I had to reward myself in between every call. And sometimes it would be a glass of water. Sometimes I would jump up. And I, I just, you know, stretch and be like, ah, oh, feels great. On to the next. And I'd give myself some sort of excitement. I'd listen to a song right in between, right in between the next set. And sometimes that song, just that little, you know, 30 seconds or minute of juice made me feel good again. Hands to the camera, a few couple of different ways to reward yourself throughout the day. At the end of the week, me and Dorina have rituals that we do to reward ourselves. I get Sunday off. Every Sunday, I got to myself to think. I get to meditate. I get to read a book. I read The Science of Getting Rich. Although this week, I'll be reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill again, going back to the basics. And I get to listen to music. I get to go out to the pool. I, I get all Sunday. I do whatever I want. I shut off the phone. The whole community knows, don't text Walter on Sunday. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. That's how I reward myself for six days of pushing hard. Hands can if you get Sundays too. Right, if you deserve Sundays, absolutely. I, I believe everybody does. Everybody deserves one day off. Even God took a day off, right? And he's like an eternal celestial being. So if he took one off, I think you get to take one off. So when we talk about the recession, there is something coming. It's, it's not coming. It's upon us. It's okay. It's just an economical condition, right? It just means that the world around you is going to be experiencing emotionally a lot of pain. Now it's our job to solve problems. Hands to if you believe entrepreneurs solve problems for a living. That's what we do. Well, there's no bigger problem than an economic recession. Everybody is suffering. And so it's our opportunity to step up. If maybe in the past we didn't know what to do or how to serve, there's now a, an opportunity been created for us to step up, to level up, to help people. And when we help people, even if they don't have money, guess what? They always find the money to pay and help the people who help them. This is human nature, the law of reciprocity. So we're going to go through a recession coming up. This is, it's already in it. We're already experiencing it. We're seeing our properties that we put on the market fall out of, you know, the deals fall apart. We're seeing things that normally would have uh, sold like this, no longer selling quickly. Interest rates are going up. Home prices haven't come down, but they are stagnating. They're, they're running sideways right now. We've seen the stock market drop two years of losses. Like all, all the two years of gains completely wiped out. So anybody who was in the stock market, you know, for the last two years and the S&P has lost everything for the last two years. Hands to the camera. If you've seen that, you know, somebody who's experienced that right now. Crypto, same scenario, right? Everything has been completely wiped free. They thought they'd never go under 30,000 on Bitcoin. They're down at 20. We, we saw it as low as 18.5, right? Mitch Jorsky's like, yes, buying opportunity because he's got the abundance mindset. He understands he's an investor. During this period, there are a couple of careers that are going to be explosive. There are things that will continue to explode and grow. I told you there were two things that I was going to talk about that would make you a recession-proof individual. Hence, care if you're interested in what those two things are. All right. All right. Here we go. First one, landlords. Being a landlord. Being a rental agent, an agent you know, working for rental properties, being a property manager, managing rental properties for people who will be having to sell their houses to banks. So managing portfolios for people, managing when somebody isn't able to live in their house and have to move to a different place to 
uh, to get their career going because they have to, you know, the careers aren't where they used to be. So now you're gonna have people shifting and, and property managing, decorating, home decorating, like anything in the space of helping sellers sell their house, because there is going to be a shift over towards that for attorneys being in the, the foreclosure space or being in the bankruptcy, bankruptcy, bankruptcies, yep. Getting into the bankruptcy space it was one because with an S when they lose their house, but they haven't, they agree to it's not foreclosures before foreclosure. You got it too, Short right? Sale. Short sale. Short sale. Uh, let's give everybody a round of applause. Wow. Froze up. It's been so long. It's been so long since I've seen a short sale. I was going to say it's been so long since I've seen a short sale. <laughs> So these are coming back. So short sales will be coming back. You'll be seeing uh, people suffering in, in that arena. So as real estate investors, it's up to us to go out and make sure that people's financial situations are helped, right? So as real estate investors, we serve the marketplace when it's time to sell a property, they're gonna need cash. By the way, we were in an inflationary market. What happens right after hyperinflation is deflation. After the, the dollar becomes extremely useless, snaps back for a little time, it will become extremely valuable. Cash is key during a deflationary moment. We're not going to stay deflationary for long, but during this moment, this next two to three years of deflation in real estate, you're going to see prices start to drop down, to come down a little bit. You may not see a massive change in prices in real estate, but you will see the rents continue to rise. Hence the camera, you've already seen that. So being a landlord, being a landlord, I'm not saying acquiring more rental property right now. What I'm saying is being a good landlord, fixing the units you already have, fixing what you've already got in place, or building a business around helping landlords fix their units or sell their properties. Those businesses are going to do very well. The second, the second recession proof strategy, which is more for the larger audience, the larger group of people who don't already have properties that they're a landlord for. This second group is going to be building relationships with people and solving their problems. This is going to be attaching yourself to 100 people who have the capacity to do well in this market, who want to do well, who have the ability to do well. This will be contractors. This will be uh, property managers. This will be real estate agents who get into the rental space, servicing those people who are doing really well. People in the healthcare industry are going to do phenomenal in a recession. There are a lot of people that you can serve in these spaces. Hands to the camera if you're catching the concept behind this. It's not about getting into the space. It may be about befriending those people and serving them. Uh, people who run grocery stores, people who do a uh, home repair maintenance, but not builders, not builders, uh, auto repair, auto repair and maintenance. And the reason behind this is that, and by the way, uh, where are my business buyers, people who buy businesses that cash flow? anybody on the call, you're, you're going to do amazing in a recession. People who buy cash flowing businesses are going to do absolutely amazing because so many businesses are, are shifting because they don't understand marketing and sales, but it's not because like they think they're in a recession, but their industry is not. And there's going to be a lot of opportunity because of their mindset, not because of the industry itself. Hence, Gareth, that's possible. If you understand that's possible. Excellent. Auto repair and maintenance because people will be holding onto their vehicles. Who's seen the price of cars go up? Anybody seen that? So instead of selling and buying new cars, they're fixing old cars. You'll see a person in a recession say, well, I can't, I can't buy a new car now. I've got to fix this thing. You'll see people who do DIY, like show you how to fix cars, show you how to fix uh, houses. Influencers who are showing you how to fix things are going to do well. They're going to get a lot of attention because this is now a time where people are going to have to DIY. Home depots or repair places, financial advisors and economists, anybody who's talking about how to make money, how to save money, how to live on less. It, influencers in that space are going to freaking crush it. Uh, ask me how I know, right? We'll build millionaires, right? But we're going to shift our messaging. You'll see us shift our messaging from building millionaires to being recession proof, because that's where the mindset will be. There'll be a lot more people thinking like, man, we're in recession. How do I become recession proof versus millionaire? Same thing, same strategy, <laughs> but we're going to be our marketing a little bit. Accountants, accounts, people are going to be tighter on the books. So they're gonna be paying attention to the numbers a little tighter. So anybody in the accounting, bookkeeping uh, industry, you're gonna see people shifting over to that space. Now I'm not saying get into the space, right? If you don't already have a business built, but you could acquire the business or you could serve the business, or you could become friends with somebody in one of those businesses. Listen to me. If you're looking to raise capital to buy real estate, Put your hand to the camera if you'd like other people's money to buy some real estate. Any one of those nine industries right now is going to do amazing during the recession. 
they're the ones who will have money. They're the ones who you should be building relationships with right now. And we've got a challenge coming up that is designed for this. Hanson Can, if you know anything I produce is produced very well because I've read over 400 books. I'm an obsessive compulsive. Everything's got to be kind of perfect. Even though I say to you, doing and getting done is better than perfect. I can't help myself. I spend a lot of time really deep diving and making sure things are done right. I put way too much effort and way too much time into this, which is why we get such exceptional, amazing results. By the way, Hanson Camera, if you know, we've built almost 50 millionaires through the mentorship program this last three years, almost 50 millionaires. We're on our way by the hundred millionaires summit. Last year, we had a hundred people commit to becoming a millionaire. This year, the goal is 1000 people in Orlando all together committing to build themselves into being millionaires. We're going to sign the contract, the millionaire contract. We'll be signing it together. Now, I'm going to use the 100 Millionaire Summit as a way to build your wealth. That is what it's designed for. That's what we did last year. But I found something last year that I didn't know about ever. More people partnered at the 100 Millionaire Summit than any other event, any other uh, digital platform that I created. More partnerships were formed at a three-day live event. They were formed at the summit because of the way we structured the summit. Day one is mindset. Hey, who do you need? Like not how, but who do you need to become successful? And then day two was partnering, how to partner with those people how to leverage DISC to identify the right partners, how to identify what their goals are, how to have quick conversations so you could partner with somebody. Then day three was the business plan where you and potentially your partner work on your million dollar strategy together. Hands to the camera if you recognize it's designed that way, but it was an accident. I did not realize that how powerful it would be. I thought we were just doing a fun event where I was getting an opportunity to really put all these pieces into people's minds, but I didn't realize how impactful and how effective like getting people together in a room was. So imagine this, the 30 day challenge we're putting together, this recession proof challenge is 30 days of intentionally building 100 relationships around you. They don't have to be millionaires, but it would speed up the process. Like, I don't want to put that on you, right? 100 people that you're going to commit to. The requirement is they must be in one of the nine spaces that I just suggested. They must be in one of those nine spaces that are going to be recession-proof. 100 people who are already in recession-proof businesses. Hands the camera if you catch where I'm going with this. It makes a lot of freaking sense. So my goal is for you to get 100 people. I've built a 30-day step-by-step process where I'm in it and I've got my Millionaire Path consultants, my recession-proof consultants will be in it with you, making sure that you're staying on track with what we're committed to doing. And we're going to drive you through for 30 days, building your 100 people. And not just building 100 people, but having an automated follow-up system using Alchemist Connect, using our unfair advantage, our leverage software, so it communicates with people for you. So it keeps the follow-up going. So you don't have to remember to do things. Is anybody here... Notice their mind seems to let them down when it comes to remember to call people or text people, reach out to people. Has anybody else uh, failed in that area? <laughs> Whatever. I don't know why it happens, but for some reason, my subconscious mind's like, aren't you hungry right now? Don't you have to go to the bathroom or something? Don't you feel like you need a stretch? You've been working hard. We'll call them in a minute. And then you get back to your desk and you realize there's something else you've got to do. Has anybody felt this before? You notice subconscious minds let us down in the past. I'm not the only one. It makes me feel better. Well, being recession proof, is a no joke scenario. This is important. There is no other time in your life that this that is going to matter as much as this next 30 days we're going through this recession proof challenge. Because once it's done, once these relationships are built, you will now know what it's like to hold 100 relationships. I hold over 3000 relationships. And I do it because I have a great software that allows me to stay in touch with people. I've got a great system for staying in touch with people. I want to give you just a little taste of what that's like. 100 people who no matter what happens are going to refer to you as a solution. Now, when you're the solution, recognize entrepreneurs get paid for solving problems. When you are the solution for 100 people, making an extra 100,000 is pretty easy. Hence, can if you can collect $100 a month from somebody, right? You, you know that $100 a month from somebody is no big deal if you're adding some sort of crazy value to them. Well, imagine 100 times 100, 100 times 100 easy money. Imagine if there was residual income coming in every single month. And it's camp, you're catching this, some cool stuff. It is possible. Ask me how I know. We've got the CRM, right? CRM, we charge a hundred bucks. It's monthly. Now that's a really great residual process because once it's been built and once you're in it, you're hooked for life because it is the easiest thing that you'll have ever worked with. Amy McMurray was talking about it earlier on the, the pregame call here. And she said, man, like people are just calling me now. People 
are just reaching out to me, asking me, you know, what, what do you mean about my house? And what is it you want about my house? So you want to sell, you want to buy my house? Like she's got two motivated sellers from one day of letting the system work. And so care if that's some power. So we're going to talk about how to raise capital over the next 30 days. Like this, this 30 day challenge is going to prepare you. It's going to build you a community, a tribe, a 100 person tribe. Now the hundred millionaire summit, should you so choose to use it? Hence camera, by the way, if you like unfair advantage, you like to take advantage of everything when you see it, you capitalize to the maximum. You carpe diem is your, your words, right? Carpe diem is your mantra. Mantra, you get out of bed, you're like carpe diem. Today is my day. Well, the way to take advantage of that is you take even a small percentage of your people to the 100 Millionaires Summit as your guests. Now, they got to pay for their ticket because, you know, if they don't pay, they don't pay attention. But if they're your 100 people who you've been working with and supporting and you're saying, hey, and they're seeing your success, they're seeing you push, they're seeing you connect with them better than anybody else connects with. They're saying, I should be connecting with people like this in my business. You know, how is it that Derek is connecting with everybody? This is insane. Like, what is he using? What is he doing? Why is Amy so, so connected? Why is Brian Huffman like crushing this relationship thing with me right now? Man, I feel so important. I feel so special. I should ask him how he's doing it. Is it possible that you might bring a few people to the 100 Millionaire Summit with you? And when they're there with you, and I'm saying who here is committed to building 100 millionaires and they look over and they see your hand up, that's right, that they're going to think, oh my God, I came with them. They might accidentally make me one of their 100 people. Answer the camera if that's reasonable to believe that the people you bring are going to be inspired by you just being in the room. This is something I've experienced in my own life. I've seen it at 10X when I, I brought my whole team to 10X with me. And Graham was like, you're out there. You got to work and serve other people. You got to help people become rich. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah. My team looked over and I could feel them like afterwards, all the questions like, hey, you serious about that? Like, is that really what you're doing? I was like, yeah, man, I build millionaires. That's what I do. Like, we're going we're gonna to get everybody to the next level. That's all it takes. Be a decent human being. Connect with people. We're going to connect with 100 people over the next 30 days. And I should tell you, there's a price behind it. It's very expensive for people who don't want to connect to people. Hence, Karen, if you know, there's people out there who don't want to connect, who don't want to become recession-proof. Like there's, there's people out there for sure. And for them, it's extremely expensive. For you, it's $97. And $97, you know, tell me you don't like my beautiful shiny head. Tell me you don't like that I wear all these beads and wristbands of abundance. But don't tell me you don't have $97 to become recession-proof. When I say recession-proof, I mean, when you have 100 people that all have money, that are in recession-proof businesses, cash flow is flowing, and you're occasionally the person who's like, oh, yeah, did you know about Wealth Principle 2? You know, the business has to make a million dollars. We got to scale up. Did you know about Wealth Principle 4? You know, it's got a flow. It's got a cash flow. The different uh, types of money coming in. When you're just giving these little tips, these little like, little tips, little text message, hey, by the way, check this out. They're going to go to you and say, where are you getting all this knowledge? Or, hey, you know, I got extra cash right now. I heard you were in real estate. I heard you were investing in real estate. I keep seeing the real estate prices like looking good. Rents are going up. I keep hearing you tell me about this cash flow deal you're getting in. By the way. All you have to do ever is talk about real estate once a month. You recognize that? With well, 100 people, you just send them a little thing like, hey, I just got into this deal. I'm looking at it. Who do you know who might be interested? Don't ask directly for cash, right? You send out to your 100 people. Who do you know who might be interested in this real estate deal? Now, all of your friends that you've been building relationships with now know that you're in real estate, that they could invest with you. Right? You didn't ask them for anything. You just said, hey, who do you know who might be? Right? And this is all part of what we're doing with Alchemist Connect. It's all part of what we're doing with 30 days to becoming recession proof. It is every day. Every day, you and I are going to be jumping into a module. Most of it is recorded. So a lot of it is already short recorded missions. So every day you're getting a mission from me. And most of the missions will take you about 10 to 20 minutes. Hands up, if you can spend 10 to 20 minutes for the next 30 days to become recession proof. Yes? Excellent. The link is challenge.alchemistnation.com. Now, when you click on the link, I don't know if it works. We've been so focused on building the challenge that we forgot to build the landing page. So <laughs> when you click on the landing page, if it doesn't work, we're going to send Ron Bowling and Daryl, our team, a big forgiveness for, for not being able to make it on time. If it does work, awesome. Submit your, your contact information in there. Pay the $97. You'll be initiated in the 30 day challenge. This is a 30 day recession proof challenge. When you're getting this recession proof challenge, I almost forgot the bonuses, um, cause, but wait, there's more. When you sign up for the recession proof challenge, you're getting not one, not just 30 days of kick ass, you know, building with us. You're getting two tickets to the hundred millionaire summit. If you've already bought your tickets, these are a gift for somebody. Hence, can if you recognize it helps to bring two people along already. Make sure these two people are people who would not have paid 
but you care so deeply about, you're forcing them to come with you. Like my brother, I brought my brother once, I brought my mother to events, I brought my other brother to events. So this would be one of those people, somebody who you might not be able to get to pay, but if you said, hey, I want you to come with me, I already bought your ticket, they would pay. Anybody have people like that in their life? That's what those tickets are for. Or you can use one yourself. Uh, general seating, this is not executive tickets. These are not uh, uh, VIP tickets. So for our VIPs and our, our executives, you're sitting up front, you're getting all the bonuses of comes with each one of those. So the VIPs, the extra day, the executives, the, uh, the seating and the mentorship program, access to the mentorship program for yourself and a guest. I'll let one of the Millionaire Path Consultants tell you all about the benefits of uh, the 100 Millionaire Summit. So either Derek Neal or Amy McMurray, if you want to have a call with one of our Millionaire Path Consultants, you can schedule with them. Bonus one, two tickets to the 100 Millionaire Summit. Bonus two, we're giving you access to Alchemist Connect for 30 days. The entire 30 days, the only thing this challenge will cost you is $97. Everything else is just 10 to 20 minutes of commitment to yourself becoming recession-proof. When I say recession-proof, I'm not worried about legacy wealth right now. I'm concerned about making sure that you have the ability to support yourself, your family, your friends, and be able to give wise advice on how to pull out of this recession better, stronger. Remember, Uber was built in a recession. Airbnb was built in a recession. Many of my friends, my, my mentor was built in a recession. I was built in a recession. When times are tough, that's when we make our big deals. That's when we make the most money. When there's blood in the streets, that's when we get rich. Chance can't if you're committed to getting rich this time around. All right. So to get there, we got to become recession proof. Uh, third bonus. Andrew McMurray, are you on the call? What, what was our third bonus? I remember we had another one. I'm letting them into the Alchemist Jumpstart group calls. So Alchemist Jumpstart, we're not going with the full jumpstart of eight weeks. We're going to go with four intense weeks. Hands to the camera if that's, you know, that's a thousand dollar value. Yeah. These are the bonuses, Amy. So yes, you're getting all of this. You're getting the 30 days video coaching. You're getting the live coaching with our implement coaches. You're getting the uh, new one pagers digital workbook for each mission. Uh, we're actually doing that out on Alchemist Nation. So we're not going to do one pager. We kind of shifted that. And then you're getting a 30 day access to the recession proof challenge virtual group, which is in Alchemist Nation right now. So you're getting, you're also getting the five day challenge. So as soon as you sign up, you're getting access to these five day pre week challenges and you're getting access to this group so you can message and talk to each other in here. So we're all together in Alchemist Nation. This is, I think I, I pulled out all the stops in recession proof. I think I've got everything that could possibly work to make sure this happens. And all it's going to take now is the next 30 days to go by. So go to challenge.alchemistnation.com, register today, and let's start these next 30 days with the most power that anybody who sees you moving like this is going to say, wow, they're committed to their success. I don't know what fuels them. I don't know what drives them. I don't know why they're pushing so hard. You know, when they should be at the bar, by the way, another business that does really well, bars, right? Alcohol places do really well in a recession because everybody's depressed. You know, Netflix will explode because everybody's gonna be at home watching Netflix and chilling and just saying, well, times are so bad, times are so tough. You know, let's just get high. Let's just get drunk. Cause you know, whatever, maybe tomorrow it'll get better. But Alchemist Nation will be taking ground. We'll be grabbing what they're letting go of. We'll be moving forward, buying their properties, acquiring their businesses, saying yes to solving problems when everybody else is backing away from problems. We're gonna be charging in towards them. Hence, care if you're committed to become recession proof over the next 30 days, you're ready to go. Let's get it. All right. So book of the week, <laughs> by the way, for everybody who had a lot of fun, hence care if you had a lot of fun on this one, if this was probably one of our best, most powerful, that's because I'm right in stick to itiveness. I had to take this one very seriously. Stick to it is one of my favorite principles. I'm writing an entire book around it. And eventually that will be the book of the week. But for right now, we've got a different book. Mike Shine, let's give Mike Shine the closer, the holistic attorney, the keeper of the books. A big round of applause. Mike, what is the book of the week? I'm glad this is your favorite principle, Walter, because this is emotionally in my heart, my absolute favorite book. I don't know if you can see this, but I actually have the illustrated alchemist which I got specially and it has illustrations. My best man read this part, portions of this book to me and my wife, Brenda, at our wedding. So if you need any proof. And this book is just so good for stick to because the subtitle, it's a fable about following your dream. And it is really about stick to uh, Santiago does this journey. And don't let the fact that it's a fable that you can read this story to your kids fool you because the message here is so powerful that I've been living it. And so I, it's all about sticking to your why, whatever it is that, that the universe tells you is your thing to do and also avoiding fears. So basically achieve your personal legend, legend 
evolve into a higher being by achieving your personal legend. It's such a fun book. It's so amazing. And it'll just get you so amped up. I just love The Alchemist. I read it at least once a year. I recommend it all the time. It's a story with so much heart. And it also, one of the things we were talking in the chat about fear, and probably the main thing that stops people, and we talk about it all the time, is fear. And that's addressed in this book, too. So 52 Weeks, it's my favorite, favorite book. I recommend it. Buy it for yourself. Buy it for your friends. Buy it for your kids. Read it. Read it again. Read it again. And uh, live it. The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. That's the book of the week. Let's give Michael Shine a round of applause. He's got The Alchemist, the illustrated edition. I love it. I got the, this one over here is the original one I, I read, uh, 25th anniversary edition. Hands the camera if you've read this book already. If anybody on the call, awesome, awesome. This is kind of where the name came from, right? Alchemist Nation, Agent Alchemist, when we first started. We had one of our people just started calling me an alchemist. And I said, I'll, uh, I'll stick to that. That sounds good. Let's give Mike Shine one more round of applause. The keeper of the books, the holistic attorney. Hans Kamp, this was a powerful week. We have some steps to apply, the eight steps. I want you to, even though we did it together, I'd still like to see you go back and review and apply those in your life. Next week, we're going to be talking about Wealth Principle 25. Wealth Principle 25 is a powerful principle because it was designed to take place right after Wealth Principle 24. And if you have not uh, identified where to find the Wealth Principles, you can go to alchemistnation.com. And when you scroll over to the 52 Wealth Principles, scroll down, and we are currently at 25, the power of outsourcing. So once you decide to stick to it, you're going to start needing help. If you don't know where the books are, I think you could scroll to the right and the books are in here somewhere. No, I got to add them in. So if you're on the 52 Wealth Principles, you could scroll down to Millionaire Books and you'll be able to identify what book is next. So Wealth Principle 25 uses the whole new mind. Whole new mind, when you click the link, you can actually purchase it online at Amazon. This book changed the game for me of how I understood how to outsource, what to outsource. This is talking about the left and the right brain, why they operate differently and why in this day and age, we're in the conceptual age. We're no longer in the, the age of steel. We're not in iron. We're not in information anymore. We're not in uh, technology we are actually in a conceptual age. So it's a very different uh, way of thinking and a whole new mind is gonna help you do that, which means outsourcing. A lot of outsourcing comes from this book.